So I'm playing some more control area in here, and I'm going up against uh, an unknown brand deck. Uh, okay, so just kind of a little bit peek behind the scenes. I recorded this. I tried to record this about three times over, getting like five minutes, ten minutes, and then twenty minutes each into it, and then finding out something in the court recording process went wrong. So I am going to kind of breeze through this a little bit faster than I usually would, because I don't want to actually do this, but I think it's still has some some nuggets of knowledge in here. So going going into this, I'm going first to control Aerodin. That's not very good. Now I do have some proactive options in my uh, in my deck, like Kaleno Harpy, and also I don't actually have my Wild Hunt Hounds to start getting those frosts out and thinning my deck. So I'm in a really bad situation here. I don't have I don't really have any options. Like what what, what am I gonna play? I'm gonna play uh, my Ekimara on nothing. No. Am I gonna play my Drowner on nothing? No. And most of these other cards require something to be activated outside of maybe Woodland Spirit, but I'm not playing a a stifle, uh, smother you with tempo woodland spirit. And then I would just kind of focus on all these other cards, which are, what if he doesn't play anything that allows me to play any of these cards? Then I'm just kind of screwed. And then I just give up my woodland spirit and then I give up the round for nothing. So instead I'm just going to give it up. I'm going to make him go one card down. We'll go into round two and I'll force him to, um, to submit to the power of my weather. Right. But what I actually find out is that he's playing a strengthened brand. And also, uh, one thing I neglected to mention, if he is playing a carryover discard brand, like with Mark Varg and Saris and all that, it's much less effective in the rounds two to three. It's much less effective overall if it's only going from rounds two to three instead of rounds one to two and then two to three. So basically, I'm cutting the effectiveness of his carryover in half if he has it which case he doesn't actually doesn't actually but still it's a safe bet to assume that discard brand these days are running that kind of archetype and not the strength and archetype now one thing to, that kind of scares me is that he could absolutely be playing a, an axman deck which if he wanted to he would just open pass on this round two force me to go one card down we go into round three on even cards uh 12 apiece and then he gets to go second play reactively and then he gets to play his axman on top of that which would be absolutely devastating i don't want to go to a round a super long round three because that would just be a, a death sentence if you're playing his axman because they would just scale infinitely true i do have some control options but typically they have more than enough axman or otherwise disruptive effects to make up for it so i'm really hoping here that he doesn't actually go for a, a long round three which he actually should have done i believe this is a pretty big mistake he made a couple mistakes. I'm not going to like harp on him for that or anything. this is not this is not a VOD review to check out main end, right? This is my VOD review to check out my game, but he did make a pretty crucial mistake here. He's playing a, like a mix of a strength and slash Axman deck with some gold weather and some other disruption effects. He should have just dry passed here and gone into round three. You know, I, let's say I do actually like smother him with three weathers. It's not going to really matter considering what the cards that he's playing like a blue boy Lugus is much, much better in a round three situation where it's much better in a situation where uh, they can't deal with it and it just keeps like damaging all the rows by one, which is against a swarming deck like mine. It's absolutely incredible. And really, he should have waited to play Lugos until he got a guaranteed like hit on a bunch of units, like at the very end of a round almost, or if uh, until he had gotten an Axeman on the deck. So he kind of makes some, some sequencing mistakes here. I'm not going to harp on him too much for that, but I go ahead and eat it with my my Akimara because I want to get, get rid of that as soon as possible. Also, it's a nice target for Akimara. Uh, one thing I guess he was considering maybe was that uh, he didn't have anything in the graveyard to revive and maybe he has a lot of revive cards in his hand. But even still, if I'm playing, you can kind of assume that they control Aerodin or that the Aerodin is playing control or mid-range, which means they're going to have the options to kill your units and then you can just bring them back that way. And also, he, he does have discard brand, which means he can just discard like three Axemen from his deck and then pull them all out with free, Priestess of Freya. And eventually, uh, you know, Blue Boy Logos will die and then you just Sigri for that. So he made some mistakes, but we're not going to harp on that too much, even though I've talked about it for like a full minute. <laughs> so he plays like Combi, very strange card. Uh, also, a bit of a sequencing mistake. That's kind of something you play at the end when they have no options to deal with it. Uh, this is like, this is by this point in the game, like with no gold immunity, uh, this card has like become really, really bad, which is totally fine because I believe what it does is it kills everything on the board and then it gives your opponent like a 12 strength dude. It's supposed to kind of favor you a little. You're supposed to play in such a way that favors you, right? In the, in the way that, um, I don't know. I don't even know how this card plays. I, I would 
I'd be very surprised if it kills everything on the board. I'm, I imagine it just kills everything on your opponent's side of the board, and then it gives them a strength 12, uh, 12 strength unit. Because if it killed everything on your side of the board as well, then it just wouldn't be as useful. Uh, with gold immunity not being a thing, gold immunity used to negate any damage or any effects from any other card, uh, which is an interesting timing go ahead. <laughs> uh, but regardless, I just go ahead and go for the lock, which isn't the best lock. I could have just something. I could have done something like smite, uh, not smite, um, like lacerate or something like that. I think I can use lacerate on that. Yeah, but regardless, Kimmy's a weird card. I didn't want to deal with the nuance of trying to deal with it, even though the my lock is so incredibly useful in these kind of situations against these kind of decks. I still kind of used on uh, less than a less than useful card, which is a mistake on my part. I didn't really know what this guy was playing, so I was just kind of just dealing with it as. As I went along. Okay, we're going to speed this up a little bit. He goes for the gold weather, which is what I was expecting. He did wait until he got at least two procs off, which is good. But he doesn't have his Axeman out yet, which he is playing. Which he could have just gotten the Axeman out first. But So I play Gals. I'm looking for my uh, mage for the weather clear. I do get it. It was a bit of a risk, but a risk well taken. Go for the clear skies. Get a little bit of a heal there. A cheeky heal. We're going forward. I'm way over tempo here. I really wish I had a spy here, but... Can't really do much about that. He plays out his greatsword. I'm gonna play my drowner to bring that to the range row. It does damage it, but it gets it away from that that long that war long ship that I don't want it to be nearby. Because every time it gets hit, it's just gonna soak up that damage and then heal itself and then buff itself, which is you know no fun. I believe that was restore. He plays out another warship, uh, which was smart of him to use last round because then he can revive it into this round. Uh, with no ill effect. Then I go for moving it to the back row because I don't want to get any effect off. I'm just trying to shut down his wind condition as much as possible at every stop of the way. Clearing his weather. Uh, moving his units around. Getting some weather down. Eating the uh, the Blue Boy Lugos uh, whale. Uh, locking the Canby. I'm just dealing with all of his threats at each uh, opportunity that they come up. So, of course, as you should always do, as soon as he discards, I look to see what he discarded, and it's an Axeman. I'm not really sure why he discarded the Freya. <laughs> it's a little bit strange. But he does have an Axeman. Also, he's not playing Avalak. That's, I think that's what was really strange about this deck. Anyway, a like, Avalak would have been really good in this deck. So he plays out, uh, he's got Axeman in the graveyard. I'm going to use my Caretaker to steal it because I know he wants to revive it as soon as he possibly can. Oh, that's why he didn't play Axeman because he didn't have any in his hand. They're all in his deck. So maybe a bit of an unlucky draw there. So I go for the Axeman. And I steal it away from him. I put it on the row that I know is going to, going to be getting constant value off of. And I start building on my own Axeman. I've become the Axeman deck. So we keep going. I'm going to probably speed up more along this second half of this match. <laughs> plays out Freya, plays out the Great Sword, so he knows about that sequencing. It's weird. It's like he knows about like some of these like more mechanical stuff, but he knows less about the um, the over overarching strategies of playing the deck. Which again, this is casual. It's like, I'm like, I'm trying. I don't want to be a dick. I'm not trying to just like. Oh man, I'm so great. Look at me. No, no, that's not what I'm doing. I just there are things to point out here that I I would be irris it would be irresponsible of me not to point out. And if that makes me look like an asshole, then so be it. <laughs> Basically, so I'm playing out all my carryover with like the Kalino harpies and everything. I'm just waiting for him to end this round because he's not going to be getting much value. There's no way he's going to pass me, right? So he's just trying to bleed my cards out. That's totally, that's you know, I'm just responding to it. So why did I use my lacerate on this uh, this melee row instead of the back row? I don't want this this back unit to soak up that damage and then convert it into a buff. So I'm just going to damage the melee row where I know I'm going to get guaranteed damage. That isn't going to be too bad. He plays out. Now this is the perfect opportunity to use Blue Boy Lugos. This is when you want to use it. Maybe he played it earlier because he wanted it to die so that he could bring it back. Anyway. Although I don't think that was a sure thing, but <laughs> I don't think that was a sure thing. But he still got it. So he plays out the Blue Boy Lugos and my video is messing up a little bit. No, it's just on here. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I have no options for that Blue Boy Lugos, which I couldn't even last rate it unless I wanted to like cut off the arm to take the infection with it, but that would have been a bit overkill. So I even out my units. 
I go for the frost just to thin out my deck a little bit here and also to give myself a little bit of tempo so I can maybe hero pass. And that hero passing, I believe, is what they called it in Gwet Slam, where you try and force your opponent to overplay it. Like in, in this exact situation, if my opponent plays too low of a tempo play and I don't, I don't think he can pass my current points with the last card in his hand, I can just pass even though I'm on the losing side and I have two cards left in my hand because I don't think he can pass my points and win the game based on what he has right now. And that's the hero pass. Of course, if they do have enough points to pass you, then you lose. So that's not that's not that's not fun. What else did he got in here? He does what? He does have an axeman? Why are you waiting so long to play your axeman? Ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> this guy's weird. Maybe it's because I got I got rid of his gold weather so effectively that he just like ran out of things to do. And also, don't don't they also use like white frost and things? I don't know. This, this action deck is a little bit weird. Like he, it can be startlingly powerful, but he doesn't have things like Avalak or more weather, more disruption. He has like harpooners, but he doesn't have any last rates. Okay, all right, I'm done. I swear I'm done. Okay, I have to call it out though. <laughs> and he plays up this last card to get rid of my carryover, but it's entirely useless. It doesn't really matter. He doesn't have. Uh, oh, he does actually hit with the axeman, but it's still not gonna be enough. Even without the harpies popping out, that wouldn't have been enough. Uh, thankfully, my weather was ticking over quite a long period of time, so I, that probably closed the distance on that pretty effectively. Yeah. And we go into round three. He has no carryover, uh, and I have a renew plus a terrible card. I should have kept the Kalino Harpy. I got greedy, and I got stuck with the Biting Frost. Even like uh, even the freaking like Wild Hunt Hound, like the three Wild Hunt Hounds that I still had left, my deck would have been better, as opposed to the two Frosts. He plays the Harpooner. And I have left with me a Woodland Spirit, my win con. Play it twice in one match. Here we go. That's how you win games right there. Look at that nice premium art too. So good. So that's the game. Uh, like I said, recorded it three times. So it kind of went more quickly. Lost some nuance. Lost some stories. Lost some narrative. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, the main point to take away from this match is that I, while I was playing Control Aridin, I, I didn't have any proactive options in my play uh, in my hand. So I went ahead and passed, even if it's not something you do in every situation, like you maybe wouldn't spell Tal. Uh, because anything that I was going to play wasn't going to be very effective. And also, I didn't really know what he was playing. If he was playing a discard brand with carryover, he just would have smothered me in rounds two and three with that carryover. Whereas I have a really weak first round and I can't effectively deal with later rounds uh, off the back of that. Going to the second match, uh, the second round, I just dealt with every single one of his threats that came up because I'm playing this kind of control minded Aridin and I knew what he was kind of go trying to go for. And I made sure to change my strategy or alter my strategy and my tactics to match that. I cleared his weather. I moved his units. I stole his one condition. I made it my own. And uh, I had my weather down. It was t constantly ticking. But at the same time, I didn't position it in such a way that it would tick on those great swords, which allow him to buff those up. So all in all, it was just make like change like changing the way you play your your usual game because this is not this is a very unusual game overall because one i don't get to use my weather i had to change the way i use my weather uh to like the third form which is to kind of be there but not necessarily be your win condition and also i had to pass while going first so it's also something i usually don't like to do or something you don't usually want to do because it gave me up the control of round one especially in a casual mat or in a ranked up uh, in a uh in a ladder match, that's not even right. In a non-competitive format, you don't want to do that because, you know, it's a lot less effective than you think it might be. Even if you're playing something like Spell Tell. But that would be the absolute extreme. Yeah, there we go. Thanks for watching.